Hello, hi, hey, or something, you and dudettes. My name is Genator84 and the Batman. I would have gotten this review out sooner if it wasn't for the fact I couldn't see it until the Tuesday after release as I went away on a holiday opening weekend. Coincidentally, the last time I'd gone away on an Airbnb trip was the day after the first teaser for this movie dropped. I love the Batman character, having been at the centre of two of my favourite TV shows, three of my favourite games, and four of my favourite movies of all time. I love how differently he can be interpreted from iteration to iteration, and this looked to be a very unique and exciting spin on the world of the Caped Crusader. And in a way, seeing it later than I would have liked kind of bolstered my anticipation for it thanks to seeing those rave reactions as well as watching some Batman movies during my trip. So by the time I finally got to sit down and experience it for myself, it felt like I was experiencing a real cinematic event. But before we talk about the Batman, let's talk about L.A. Noir. It's one of my favourite games, and what I love the most about it is its sense of mystery solving. Exploring the crime scenes, discussing the clues, and then going to different locales to meet those connected to the events is something I find absolutely riveting. And films comparable to The Batman, like Seven, capture that feeling in cinematic form too. I bring this up because that's what I loved the most about The Batman 2. Investigations are something I just find easily compelling, and making it such a key part of this film makes it stand apart from the other Batman iterations in a very engrossing way. Adding to the grip of this is Paul Dano's Riddler. <sighs> Holy crap! His presence looms over the entire movie, even when he's not on screen. But whenever he is, the way he'd act and the things he'd do was genuinely unnerving. Any scene with him on the phone felt very eerie and suspenseful, a la this one scene from The Dark Knight. While it's more stylized than Nolan's movies overall, this does have a similarly grounded darkness, which, because of its comic book stylings, hit possibly more effectively here. Dano's deranged performance was easily the standout of what was a really great ensemble. And I like that it does feel like a big, character-driven narrative where everyone experiences significant events which contribute to the larger story. It's incredibly well acted. I'm still unsure about Andy Serkis' as Alfred, he doesn't have enough screen time to make a proper impression, but I have no complaints about anyone else. Pattinson made for a really good Batman by conveying a lot of inner turmoil, often without needing to say a word. I loved the way he was set up before his on-screen introduction too. Michael Giacchino's score and the cinematography lending both that moment and the whole film a wholly engaging and engrossing atmosphere, even if there were some shots which felt a little too dimly lit when I saw it. It's not a conventional blockbuster, a lot of it is mystery solving and setting the mood with action sequences happening sparsely throughout its incredibly long running time. But because of how well made it is, I found myself thoroughly gripped by most of it, and the action itself felt more impactful because it's not too frequent. Nearly six years ago, I saw Batman v Superman on the big screen and geeked out at the debut of a new Batmobile in an action scene. And the exact same thing happened here. It was an absolutely thrilling sequence. Talking of BVS, a movie I do consider to be one of my favourites, it's interesting to see how its theatrical extended cut debacle has seen a resurgence of nearly three hour movies released in cinemas with little studio tinkering. This is one of the fruits of that mindset change. For better or worse. I do like how it feels like an epic, but while I was interested the whole way through, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel the length of it at times. And because of how long it is, the unconventional, somewhat quick for this movie finale didn't feel entirely satisfying to me. 
For how much time is devoted to the build-up in the rest of the movie, I was hoping the climax of it would feel less open and more complete than it actually does on a first viewing. And without giving anything away, there is a reveal right near the end which I really hoped wouldn't happen going in, but that's all I can really say on the matter for now. However, time might affect some of my feelings towards these aspects. Much like Licorice Pizza, the Batman has a real tangible sense of atmosphere, which I can already tell is going to stick with me for a long while, and so I'm sure my feelings on the parts I absolutely loved and those I wasn't as keen on will continue to evolve. And I said it with Licorice Pizza, and I'll say it again, those are the movies I appreciate the most, those which engage in the moment, but whose effect really takes a hold once you've walked out of the cinema. For now though, it's not at the level of the four Batman movies I referred to at the very beginning for me personally, but I did really like it and think its more noir approach to the story and Gotham itself makes it a truly unique and intriguing take on the character. Especially in how quickly he could change from Bruce to Batman in public. Did anyone else notice how often that happened? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you all next time for my review of not one, but ten movies. Goodbye.